Can we all stand, please? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall be whole, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated. should be a testimony for every one of us. Amen. Trust in the Lord right? until we die. Our Old Testament reading will come from the book of Psalms, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 8. And the reading of his word. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. In verse 8, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. God's word for his people.
a New Testament reading coming from St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the healing, and the doer of his holy word. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that men should always pray. And I'm a part of that crazy crew that believes that when prayers go up, blessings come down. With this in mind, let us now go to the throne of grace. Eternal and everlasting Father, we come into your holy presence with praise, thanksgiving, and adoration. Thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Oh, Master, you've been good to us. Mighty, mighty good to us, and we pause a moment to say thank you. thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will look upon this family now. You know what they are going through, but Heavenly Father, we know that you are a God of comfort. So build them up where they may be torn down, strengthen them where they may be weak, and prop them up on every leaning side. Lord, we know that you are just a prayer way. Oh, let them know, Lord, no matter what's going on in life, that you are still in control, that you are still in charge. Oh, Lord, in your word you said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And instill in their hearts, Lord, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, unspeakable joy, it comes in the morning. So be with them right now, Lord, during their season of bereavement, and we'll be so careful to give you the praise and you the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that the redeemed of the Lord say amen. At this time, we will have our expressions, and the family would like you to try to limit it to two minutes, please. At this time, we open it up for expressions. My baby sister won't let me. She said I can't add her two minutes. Help yourself, sister. But there were at least two incidences that I wanted to bring out about Mike. The first one when he was in the band. We didn't know he was in the band. <laughs> <laughs> the way we found out was homecoming when the cymbal player did his on the ground roundabout turns and his fancy twirls of the cymbal. I said, that's Mike. <laughs> <laughs> The second event was when he came home to take care of my parents. He had to take mom to water therapy, and since he was a, a male, he had to wait until all the other women were finished dressing after <coughs> therapy before he could help mom. And while he was in there, one day another lady walked in, and she said, "Oh." Is this a new service being offered? <laughs> Mike said, I'm in here helping my mother, but if you need some help. <laughs> and he left it at that. She turned around immediately. <laughs> but that's what Mike did. 
he made me feel comfortable where he was. And I'm still feeling comfortable. For lack of better words, he's been there for a lot of us.
I'm going to speak from here. Um, I just want to say to the Lampton family, on behalf of all of those children that grew up in Greenwood Missionary Baptist Church and grew up with Michael and the rest of you all, that you're in our prayers. Thank you. My name is Frederick Dunn, uh, Pledge Fall 76, and I'm Nelson Law in Tuskegee. Uh, my brother Moore made me uh, East Fall 75, and Mike was Spring 76. So both of them made my, me and my line brothers. <clears throat> and uh, Mike was uh, one that, but I won't go into great detail, but he was the one that would kind of look after you. You had some that got after you, and you had some that would look at you. Mike was one that would look at me, and I just had one vivid memory. Because I just go when you when you just go over, you really don't know what you're in, you know, and you need someone to kind of guide you through and show you what to do. And I remember we had just gone over, and um, um, Dr. Harvey, who was uh, vice president of role, whatever he was at the time, moved on to Hampton. And Mike said, uh, just gone over, Mike said, we need to do something for uh, Dr. Harvey. Let's throw a roast for her. And I'm a, a new Q, and you know, I'm ready to do all the stuff the Q do. That wasn't one of them, you know. And for Mike to have that foresight, and I, I took my son to Hampton and, and got to talk to Dr. Harvey. He remembered that. He remembered what we as undergrads, now in Bessalon, we did that. We, we threw him at roast. And uh, that was just impressive to me that Mike had that kind of foresight because um, it, um, it really meant something to Dr. Harvey for 40 some years later that he still remembered that and he was great. He said, I really appreciate what y'all did for it. So, you know, for Mike to, to have that kind of uh, thought process going, uh, I'm sure you all know it. I'm, I'm just saying, looking at it from a different angle, you know, from the fraternity. Um, you know, that, that was impressive to me. So I'm sure that there are many impressive things that you all have about Mike. But, uh, God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Amen. Amen. 
this time we will have our obituary read in silence, please. Preparation, let us lift up one stanza of Amazing Grace.
Let us pray. Eternal and most gracious Father, we come to you now, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Lord, you've been so good to us. And when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, my soul cried out, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we need you right now to provide words of comfort to the family and friends. You have indeed been our dwelling place in all generations, and we just magnify your holy and your precious name. Now, Lord, allow your servant to decrease so that you will have all of the increase. Hide me behind that old rugged cross that they will see less of me and more of thee. So now your anointing now, Lord, so that yokes can be destroyed. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, let every heart say amen. amen. First acknowledging the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is also called the Christ, to all of our friends and guests, and most of all to the Lampkin family, we greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We serve a mighty God through Jesus Christ, who is indeed worthy to be praised. We've already had the eulogy by the reflections that have been presented on this morning, so I'm going to try to provide words of comfort coming from the Lord. There's a word that's found in the book of Psalms, a very familiar passage of Scripture, the 23rd Psalm. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's word for his people, and may his word continue to edify your souls. We would like to use as a subject on this morning, there's peace and calm in the 23rd Psalm. And a subtopic, the Lord is. Let me preface things by saying that all of us who are here today must experience this thing called death. Amen? And we all don't who don't know me, I, I, I want some feedback out there. Amen. This is a celebration. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but growing up, I really didn't want to discuss the subject of death. You see, not knowing the word of God, death presented itself as something that was permanent. In essence, uh, it was the finality to life. But as I grew and matured spiritually, I learned that if one dies in the Lord, it's merely a transition from earth to glory. However, for those who are not saved, those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, death will bring nothing but sorrow, grief, regret, suffering, but most of all, it will be eternal separation from God. You see, when you're not saved, you go straight to hell where there will be gnashing of teeth. And the Bible says there's an appointed time to die, but after death comes the judgment. Amen. Amen. That's why it's imperative to accept Christ as soon as possible. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. So the only thing we have is today. Can I get a witness here? Well, for centuries, the 23rd Psalm has been one of the most tragic passages in all of the Holy Scripture. 
It is among the most familiar, so much so that even people who are not religious or very knowledgeable about Scripture recognize these words. They are among the most comforting, often being quoted in times of trouble or distress, and almost always read when we gather together at funerals. There are many images in this song which hold particular meaning. One image comes from the verse, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It would be so wonderful if God was simply promised to us that we would never go through difficult times. But we do go through great and terrible difficulties all the time, and God constantly warns us of these dangers and difficulties in his holy word. Peter wrote in this first epistle, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange is happening to you. The Bible constantly tells us that there will be difficult times in life, and Psalm 23 voices such a warning. It does not say God will keep you from danger, but rather it describes that uh, when trouble times come, he will be with us. When we feel like we are walking through a dark, dangerous valley, a valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. But what the word of God does make clear is that as we move through such times, God is with us. God is there to comfort us and to sustain us. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff comfort me. God is frequently described in the Bible as being like a shepherd who cares for and tends to the flock of sheep. The rod is, is used by a shepherd to ward off evil and to direct the sheep as they walk. The staff with the large crook at the end serves to support the sheep's body when it crosses a dangerous chest. The Lord protects, he guides, and he supports us. He does not send us through the dark valley with a cheery promise to meet us again on the other side. He goes with us every step of the way. Come on, somebody. A second image of the 23rd Psalm, to which I would call your attention to is this. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is said that a veteran of World War I had a fascinating story to tell, and one of them was about a battle that had taken place in Europe. He was an American, but he had, uh, actually enlisted with the British Army and was fighting in war for quite some time before most Americans. He was fighting on a stretch of land for days of the only end. Both armies seemed to be at a stalemate. It so happened that the battle continued into Christmas Day. The fighting stopped and all was quiet. Late in the morning, the German officers raised a white flag and moved toward the British lines under a flag of truce. Oh, my brothers and sisters, and they conferred with the British officers, and after extended conversation, the two armies agreed to pool some of their food together for a Christmas meal. The soldiers of each side joined together and ate together and sang a few songs together that had different words but common tunes. You may remember that these armies hated one another. Americans especially hated Germans with a deeply racist attitude, but there they were eating together at a table, or at least on the ground, in the presence of an enemy. The veteran said after that, it was hard to go back to fighting the next day because they had shared food together. They had sung songs together about the birth of Christ. He said, he had a glimpse of a time in the future when all of them would be together in heaven and all 
all of their earthly conflicts would disappear. Third and final image of the 23rd third Psalm, which I want to lift up today is this. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. The end of our journey, my brothers and sisters, through life on earth is to be with God forever. In baptism, we are made members of the household of God already, and our destiny is made secure through our faith. Sometimes the journey is filled with joy, and sometimes it's very sad and lonely. Yet the promise that God has already given us eternal life with him, it sustains us in our journey and gives substance to our hope. The goodness and the mercy that follows us are, 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 are not something we achieve ourselves. They are given to us by the sheer grace of God. Were it not for God's forgiveness, our sins and our mistakes would quickly disqualify us for eternal life. But with God, there is goodness and mercy supremely evident in his son Jesus Christ. Our life on the other side of earth is to be with God forever and forever. Amen. This is something all of us do well to remember as we look now to the days of hell, or hell. The grief we feel and all the emotions that go with that grief can tempt us to unbelief and irrational behavior and deep and dark sadness. Nevertheless, the goodness and mercy of God will follow us all the days of our life, giving us broad latitude to work through our grief and our sorrow and forgiveness for our mistakes. We have gathered not only to mourn over how different lives may be without Brother House, but to give thanks to God for how full life was when he was in our midst. We have gathered not only to consider the shortness and uncertainty of life in the church on earth, but to give thanks to God for his gift of eternal life in the church that's in heaven. Well, my brothers and sisters, God in his infinite wisdom decided it was time for Brother Michael to come on home. I've known, excuse me for being informal, but I've known Meat House for over 50 years. Right. And during that time, I found him to be a down-to-earth, intelligent, and a kind-hearted person. Yes. We attended different high schools, but we both attended Tuskegee Institute. Oh yes, we had some good times on the yard. <laughs> and we both pledged, what's this thing on here called? Oh, Omega Sapphire, amen. <laughs> I think I pledged a year or so before our meet house did. But I can remember how some of our homegirls, like Barbara Adams and a few more people, helped them when they were pledged. Like his daddy, houseman loved the purple and gold. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> Although he was an Omega man, he established relationship with many people on the campus as well as in the community. Houseman was a people person and one who maintained a positive demeanor. I was told that Houseman came back to Tuskegee to help out with his mom and dad when they became ill. This was very admirable and his labor was not in vain. Well, as time went on, Houseman had to deal with some health issues himself. And instead of suffering, God says, house, it's time to come on home and get some rest. As I prepare to close, I thank God for the life of Brother Houseman. I want to encourage the family to remain faithful and continue to support one another in the years to come. You see, Brother House is in a place whereby he doesn't have to worry about the troubles of this old world. You see, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
So when Houseman uh, closed his eyes on this side, he opened up his eyes on the other side. Can I get a witness here? I want you to know that in order for you to make it in this world, you need a Savior on your side. And his name is Jesus. Let me tell you who the Lord is. He's Jehovah Ra. The Lord is my shepherd. He's Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. He's Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. He's Jehovah Shalom. The Lord of peace. He's Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. And he's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who will provide. I stop by to tell you that when you are born again believer, you are not alone. You have someone who will be with you when you're riding high and when you're riding low. You may be asking, Pastor Adams, who is this man and what can he be for me? Let me tell you this and I'll leave you alone. He's a refuge and a very present help in your time of trouble. He's your bridge over troubled water. He's your sufficiency in all things. He's your heart fixer and your mind regulator. He's your company keeper at the midnight hour. He's your rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of a storm. No matter what you're going through, God will be there with you. Because the Lord is whatever we want him to be. Well, we don't say Goodbye to house man. We say, see you later. Let us bow. Eternal and everlasting Father, we thank you for your word on this morning. Let us know there is peace and calm in the 23rd Psalm and that you will be with us no matter what. Lord, we ask that you look upon the family and all the friends and loved ones that are here and those that are not able to make it. Let them know, too, that troubles don't last always. Amen. And let them know to keep their hands locked up in your hands. Ultimately, everything will be all right. Amen. We give you praise. We give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that every heart say amen. amen. this time we will have the committal. A man that is born of a woman had but a short time to live. And he is cut down like a flower. He fled as it was a shadow and never contend in one state. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O oh Lord God, most holy, O oh most holy and O oh magnificent God, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, O oh Lord, most holy, O oh God, most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior. Thou, most worthy judge, eternal, suffer us not the bitter pains of death. For as much as it please Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of the world the soul of the departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus the Christ and whose second coming in his glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body. According to the mighty working hereby, he is able to subdue all things. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord even so said the Spirit, for they rest 
from their labors. Repeat after me, please. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Family members, on behalf of the entire staff of Kenzie's family, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to serve you during this time of the week. And at this time, this is going to conclude the services here for Mr. Lampkin. Instead of having Pastor Adams come to and fellowship with you like we normally would do, we just want to ask that we greet each other afterwards with the protocols that we've all been asked to use, which is either a fish box or an elbow box. Thank you. Man, let us please bow now for our benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. 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 And amen.